Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to look at uh, sending email and SMS notifications using Node-RED. And to do that we're going to be using this flow here, this example flow here, and as always I'll make this flow available so you can download and can try it yourself. Now we're going to be using the email node here. There is two nodes. One is for receiving email and one is for sending it. And we're going to use the one for sending email. And for the SMS, uh, I'm not actually going to demonstrate this, but uh, you can use uh, one of two nodes. There's uh, the Twilio, if I pronounce that right, uh, node which you have to install. It's not installed by default. And the other one that I know about is the Clickatel node, uh, again, which you have to install. It's not installed by default. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate it because I don't have a, an account with either one of those providers so you'll need to set up an account with one of those providers in order, order to use it. But the process is exactly the same as it is for sending an email except instead of configuring an email address you configure a, a telephone. And sending an a email is free whereas if you're going to send SMS messages, messages you'll be charged at the rates of the provider. OK, back to the flow. Um, before we actually start sending e emails, I'm just going to take you through uh, what we've got here. We've basically got three inject nodes and uh, we're going to send a temperature value 18, 20 and 22. And we're going to trigger an alarm based on that value. Then This is a, a normal uh, use for the email notification or the SMS notification. You're going to be monitoring something and when that um, value goes above or below a certain threshold, you'll want to trigger an alarm. So all this function does here is trigger alarm when the temperature goes above, uh, I think it is 20. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, if the payload goes above 20. Very simple function. And what we'll see is we'll see a message in the debug node when that happens. So let's get the debug node running and let's send in some values. 18, 20 and 22 and we've got an alarm. Now if we send 22 again we've got an alarm. If we send 20 nothing happens, if we send 18 nothing happens. So that's working sort of okay but the problem is it keeps sending an alarm when the value is above 22. For SMS notifications generally you want to send an alarm when the value goes above a value or below a value and you may want to send uh, a notification when the alarm is disabled or when it when it goes off. Uh, you don't want to continuously send emails or SMS messages while the alarm is active. So you you might send periodic ones if nothing happens and the alarm is still active after 15 minutes. You might send a reminder in just case um, the message wasn't received. So what we're going to do now is we're going to build in some logic into this um, function, this, this function that's going to trigger the alarm. We're going to build in the logic so that it doesn't continuously send notifications and it sends a notification when the alarm threshold goes back below normal um, to say the alarm has been cleared and it only sends a single alarm when the alarm goes above a certain value. So let's take a quick look at the function. Now what we're going to use here is a flag and it's going to be saved as a, a context variable and this flag is going to be set true when the alarm is, has been triggered and it's going to be set false when the alarm uh, goes below the value. What we do is test the flag if it's actually defined or not. So when we initially start this flow it won't be defined so if it's not defined we set its initial value to be false uh, using this here if type of alarm flag is undefined. I use this syntax quite a lot. Okay, so now we test the payload. Is it greater than 20? If, if it's greater than 20, we want to trigger our alarm, but we also take into consideration the status of the alarm flag. So if the alarm flag is still false, then we're going to trigger the alarm. So the first thing we do is set, we set the alarm flag to true. We set an indicator message.alarm equal to 1. We're going to use that later on and we store the alarm flag back into the context variable and then we return the message. So that accounts for the alarm going above 20. The next one here tests if it's gone below 20. So if it's gone below 20, so has the alarm gone off? 
Uh, we need to take into consideration the alarm flag, so the alarm flag has to be true. So if it's below 20 and the alarm flag is true, and that means it, it was in the alarm state and now it's gone below the alarm state, then we again set the alarm flag to false, set our indicator to zero, store the alarm flag, return the message. And that is our function, nice and, and simple. So let's test out uh, this function works. Okay, just to rearrange that to make it easier to see. I, now let's test it out. So clear our debug node, set it to 18, set it to 20, set it to 22. Now we've triggered our alarm. Uh, don't worry about this one here, we, we're only interested in this value here. And then we set another 22, and notice nothing's happening over here. 22 again, nothing's happening over here. So if our alarm continues to be activated, nothing's going to be sent to the email or the SMS. Now we drop to 20, and we send them notification, 20, and again, send it to 20 again, nothing happens. Let's just clear that so we can actually see it. Set it to 18, nothing happens. Set it to 22, and we trigger the alarm again. So our function is working as expected. It's going to trigger an alarm when we go above 20, and if it stays above 20 and we keep generating, um, or we keep sending the indication into the function that it is above 20, it won't send the alarm out uh, continuously. And likewise when it drops below 20. Okay, so what I'm passing out on the alarm function, I'm actually passing the actual value, the temperature value, so I'm just returning the message and the, the message.payload contains the temperature value and it goes into this function node here and I say this function node is going to format the email and I can actually incorporate this function node into the into the main function node, I just thought I'd keep it separate to make it easier to explain Right, before I go through that, let's go and look at the email node. So this is our email node here. And let's put let's put the information to the side of it so we can actually see it. And we can set the email address, uh, but I can set it in the function node previously, so you can either set it into the main node or you can actually set it in, in the function and send it into the into the node. We need a server, this one's using Gmail, but you can use your, your own email provider. You need to get the appropriate port, and this one's using a secure connection. The username and the, the password, and I will be blanking this out in the in the video. Many of the properties of the email node you can configure in a previous function node, which is what I'm going to do. And it tells you here, if you read the info or the, the help, it tells you the message.payload is going to, take, go, going to contain the email message. The message.topic is going to contain the subject of the email message. And we can configure the to, the cc, the bcc, uh, the message from. And we can also use it to send email attachments uh, by including a file name for the, the attachment. And we can actually send an array of attachments using the message or attachments. Uh, I'm not going to cover that in this video, but I have used it and it, do it does work. Now, before I leave that, um, just a quick note about uh, Gmail, which most people will be using. If you configure it to use Gmail, you set your username and you set your password, and they are correct, but it still fails. Uh, the reason is uh, Google blocks it, so it considers it a, an insecure account. So what you need to do is log on to your Gmail account, go to your account properties, and then you can you'll see a security alert there. And if you follow that, you can uh, deactivate it and allow uh, the email node to connect, and that, then it will work after that. Now, it's easy to forget. Uh, I've configured this several times and it's failed on me and I, then I've remembered, oh, I need to go and do that. So, that's just if you're configuring it using Gmail. So, let's look at our function node here. So, we pick up the temperature, we set the, the to, we set the from, and we pick up a date, 
Now we test the alarm, remember I set this in the previous, now if it's set to 1, which is I'm testing here if it's true, then we got a high temperature alarm and I format the message. If it's not 1, it's 0, then I send the reset message. And then I format the payload I'm going to send out, I prefix it with the time, the message and the payload. And then I simply return the message. So if we trigger the alarm and you can see it in the debug node here you can see the message what gets sent out when I I trigger the alarm and it's all been connected during this time so I should have email messages in my in my uh, mailbox so if I go back and have a look at my mailbox we'll see if it's worked now here's my mailbox you can see here I've got a high temperature alarm and then I've got a reset of the temperature alarm and this is what the message I get and I've triggered the high temperature alarm again and and this is the the message so that appears to be working okay that brings us to the end of the video if you've got comments on the video then please leave them below if you like the video then click on the like button below uh, you can always subscribe to the channel and get notified when I post new videos but don't forget to click on the notification bell and also not to forget that I do actually publish a, a newsletter on the website so, and you can find a, a, a newsletter sign up form on the website if you go over there okay until next time bye